So if you guys don't mind, I'll take this one um, first because I am very <laughs> knowledgeable about this just from pretty much experience, I guess you can say. And um, I guess I want to touch on the second one. Um, what are the long-term implications of adoption to short-term problem? I think short, well, it had been a long-term problem, but what it was trying to solve was obviously the cost of publishing textbooks, you know, to have to, students to have to buy that and stuff. And so they came up with, hey, let's offer these digital textbooks with homework platforms that will help faculty, but also give it less to students. However, that has not been my experience. What has happened instead, um, and the symptom you know, that ended up creating was, it actually cost us more. Um, I am not the only one right now in college. Actually, all six of us are in college. So that's four kids, and my husband and myself. And my daughter, for instance, my daughter and my husband are both taking econ right now both of them had to pay $75 a person for inclusive access. Now, <laughs> there was no way around it. They had to get to do the course and to do the homework, they had to have this. And what we would normally do, for instance, we, me and my husband took history together. We shared the textbook. We found it cheap. We found it free. and. Um, we're able to get it that way. So sometimes, and actually every time inclusive, inclusive access or access codes have been involved, I've ended up paying more than I would have had I found a publisher's textbook. And so I think what it's doing is it's, it's stripping away the rights to, to share a book, to buy it used, to look for other, um, you know, books, you know, compare them to and stuff because um, what the state of Tennessee has done, again, from the research is they made a contract with one of the inclusive access to, in hopes of lowering the price, you know, and then all these, you know, and they had a digital engagement initiative and everything to get these teachers on board and stuff. And so, but they have to sell so many to get that price. Well, in doing that, they have, created special codes just for that campus. And so therefore, even if we were to have found inclusive access somewhere else for cheaper, we can't use it. We have to buy it from the campus. So we are locked into purchasing that particular one from that campus. And then what does that also create? If they didn't pay for that, they're either dropping the course or they're making pretty much an F because everything is behind that paywall. And so they can't even, they're, they're pretty much they're fa they failed even before they get begin, you know, they cannot complete that course. So uh, the longer, you know, implications of this is you're locking a lot of students out that can't afford it. I mean, where they might have been able to borrow a friend's or get it from the library or even, um, you know, skip it, just not even have it, they can't, you can't even do the homework anymore. And I think that's the huge takeaway that professors need to take with it. I get that it might be more time on your hand, but we're there to empower students. And I think that we need to remember that the students need to be focused. And sometimes inclusive access is not including everybody. And we're locking, people out you know we've worked so hard you guys have worked so hard to break a lot of barriers and instead this is just the larger implication of something you know more and then the other thing I'd like to bring up is you know we live in rural areas and I know Matthew you even said hey you know we're getting ready to have three people on the internet at one time you know there are students here that didn't even have the internet and it really showed its head, of course, during COVID, you know, when everybody went online and stuff. And we need to think about, you know, if we're doing this, you know, homework behind a paywall, who are we affecting? What are those students that might have been able to take courses that weren't online or didn't have those online implications? Who are we knocking those out? And it's probably a lot of lower income students. So I apologize that was long, but this is my baby right here. 